Okay, thanks for having me up here again. Um, what I'm going to talk about, uh, I talked earlier uh, about echocardiography. I'll talk a little bit of, uh, more about pathophysiology uh, in, this, uh, in this setting. Um, what we're going to talk about is doxycycline. This, uh, this has been talked about in a couple of the presentations thus far. So some of the stuff that I present today is probably going to be um, review, if you will. Um, but there's a lot of interest in the role of doxycycline uh, in heartworm disease. And when you look at the role of doxycycline in heartworm disease, uh, there's a couple things to look at. You look at the role in treatment. There's been a lot of interest in treatment. Um, Dr. Nelson did a very nice job of talking about how doxycycline is included in the standard management of uh, heartworm disease as based on the American Heartworm Society guidelines. And it's been established, at least in our guidelines, that it's an important component of the standard adult site therapy. Um, less commonly, we talk about doxycycline relative to prevention. Um, and then probably less of you pay attention to anything that has to do with doxycycline's role in transmission. And so what I'm going to try and do is review some of the aspects of where doxycycline fits into those portions of management of uh, heartworm disease. So doxycycline um, is a tetracycline antibiotic. Uh, it's treat used most commonly for management of other infections, including, including rickettsial infections, which is appropriate for this. It's a protein synthesis inhibitor, as we well know, and so it is effective against many bacteria uh, as well as rickettsial organisms. Um, one of the things to mention is that we typically don't use tetracycline per se, but in, diff in times when doxycycline might be difficult to uh, obtain or might be um, too expensive, we have used minocycline, and there's some studies that suggest that minocycline may be as effective in the management of heartworm disease uh, as doxycycline. Currently, we typically recommend the use of doxycycline. So then the question is, why do we use doxycycline? Where does it play a role, at least in the management of these three phases of the disease? When we talk about doxycycline, we have to understand what we're going after. We're not going after the parasite per se, we're going after Wolbachia. And Wolbachia is a gram-negative bacterial endosymbiont um, of heartworms. It's found in all uh, of the, the filaroidy uh, or filarial parasites that are mosquito-borne. And that's true in heartworm disease as well. Wolbachia is crucial to both survival and reproduction of the heartworm. So it's logical to believe that if we can attack the parasite in that, that manner, we may be able to optimize therapy as far as eliminating adults, potentially preventing the disease, and then maybe altering transmission. We'll talk about each one of those. Um, most of the emphasis, as I've stated previously, has been placed on its management in the role or its role in the management of adult infections in combination with melarsamine, um, as outlined in the American Heartworm Society guidelines. So when we talk about the three phases in which we might use doxycycline, the first one that comes to mind is treatment. And so obviously we're getting rid of adults, okay? so management of the adults, and also circulating microfilaria. Can we help eliminate circulating microfilaria? Can we alter those microfilaria in some manner? Um, for adulticide therapy, the American Heartworm Society has suggested the utilization of doxycycline as part of standard management protocol. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to minimize the biomass of the worms prior to total elimination, usually manif or usually um, um, uh, achieved by administration of uh, melarsamine. The standard recommendation right now is that we utilize doxycycline typically at a dose of 10 milligrams per kilogram twice daily for at least 30 days prior to administration of melarsamine. What we're trying to do is we're trying to reduce the biomass of the worm, trying to reduce the amount of inflammation that's been associated with uh, adulticide therapy. Doxycycline itself is not going to eliminate the adult worms. Even when doxycycline is used in combination with macrocyclic lactones, this does not completely eliminate 
uh, the uh, circulating adults. One of the things we have to recognize is that combination of doxycycline and a macrocyclic may in fact hasten the demise of those worms, and there are studies that suggest that some dogs will, in one study, as much as 86% of the dogs were uh, antigen negative within about 43 weeks uh, when administered both um, ivermectin-containing product and doxycycline. Much more rapid uh, uh, elimination of the adults or antigen negative status than you'd see with the macrocyclic lactones alone. So the combination of both doxycycline and the macrocyclic lactones have an additive effect on the, um, on the health of the adult worms. Now if you combine that, once again going back to the uh, American Heart Worm Society guidelines, if you read the guidelines as they're currently written, the recommendation is once an adult infection is, is uh, documented, a macrocyclic lactone is initiated, and doxycycline is, in, is administered for 30 days prior to the administration of uh, the first dose of melarsamine. There again, we have the combination of doxycycline and a macrocyclic lactone preempting the initial administration of melarsamine, once again trying to optimize or maximize the uh, adult worm death. At the same time, Again, we're not just trying to get rid of the worms, but we're trying to minimize the complications, typically the vascular, vascular and pulmonary parenchymal changes that we see associated with worm death. We understand that worm death is always associated with pulmonary embolic disease, right? The worms don't vaporize, right? They go someplace. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to mitigate the severity, the clinical severity of that, and doxycycline plays an important role. Now, there's still question as to the, the absolute role that Wolbachia and their surface proteins play in the inflammatory component associated with pulmonary uh, thromboembolic disease. But it is clear that the severity of the clinical pulmonary embolic disease is reduced by pretreatment with doxycycline. Now, what about microfilaria? We'd like to eliminate microfilaria. Remember, without microfilaria, there is not transmission, correct? Okay, so you have a dog that's amicrofilaremic, that dog does not serve as a reservoir, even if it has an adult infection. So ideally what we'd like to do is we'd like to eliminate the microfilaria as quickly as we can. Studies have shown that in combination with macrocyclic lactones, administration of doxycycline will hasten elimination of circulating microfilaria. Once again, going back to the American Heart Room Society recommendations, if we look at administration of a macrocyclic lactone combined with doxycycline, we're not only having adverse effects on the adults, but we're optimizing or increasing the likelihood that the circulating microfilaria will be reduced at least in number. We'll come back to how we might actually make more of a difference in a little later. So when you talk about treatment, doxycycline plays a role in treatment of adults. Doxycycline plays a role in elimination of the circulating microfilaria as well. Prevention. How about preventing the disease? Studies suggest that if you administer doxycycline within the first 30 days or within 30 days after administration of infective larva, you can actually prevent heartworm disease or um, dogs from becoming heartworm positive when administered um, infective larva. And in fact, if you administer it from 30 to 60 days, you'll eliminate it almost 100% the efficacy trails off after that point. I don't think anybody is suggesting that doxycycline be used as a preventative. We're blessed with a huge number of very effective preventatives that can be administered orally or by injection or topically. We're not looking at this as a preventative. That being said, it may play a role in reducing uh, infections in dogs that are obviously receiving doxycycline. When it's combined with a macrocyclic lactone therapy, obviously the macrocyclic lactone plays the most important role in elimination or prevention of uh, development of an adult infection. And then finally, um, we should talk about transmission. Okay? Does it play a role in transmission? It can potentially play a role in transmission, primarily because if we eliminate this basically two routes that I would argue that it plays a role in transmission. If it hastens the elimination of circulating microfilaria and completely eliminates them, we have to recognize that with no microfilaria there is no transmission. Just like we say with no mosquito there is no transmission. 
Additionally, and I think very importantly, is although doxycycline will not eliminate development of L3s in, in the mosquito, remember going back to the basics of the disease pathology, you have a microfilaria picked up, got to transition to an L3 before it's effective. So an L1 that's been exposed, circulating microfilaria, that's been exposed to doxycycline, a dog's receiving doxycycline, if that dog is bitten by a mosquito, that L1 may still develop in that mosquito to an L3. Say, well, now an L3, that's infectious. Studies have shown that those L1 that were exposed to doxycycline, even though they can transition from an L1 to an L2, an L2 to L3, a theoretically infectious um, life stage of the parasite, they are no longer infectious. One other reason, in my opinion, you use doxycycline in dogs with circulating microfilaria at the same time that you start their macrocyclic lactone to try and diminish not only their numbers as quickly as possible, but also if by chance a mosquito bites that dog when it's still microfilaremic, there's a less li it's less likely that that L1 will ever become an infective L3. So I think you can see that from a um, prevention, treatment, and transmission standpoint, doxycycline plays a really important role in optimal management of dogs with uh, heartworm disease. Thank you.